innovate, enable. The EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2019 India program culminated in a gala award ceremony in New Delhi. The program felicitated exceptional entrepreneurs who had embraced disruption and spurred new trends in their industries. Celebrating the stories of these achievers is the builder of a Better India series that showcases India Inc's best innovators and game changers. Hello and welcome to this special four-part web series, Builders of a Better India, that celebrates the achievements of the winners of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2019 Awards. I'm Shireen Bhan and in this series we bring you stories of 11 entrepreneurs who've made their mark as industry captains with their innovative ideas and business acumen. As disruptors of industries, they've inspired others by challenging established norms and setting new trends. Our first entrepreneur is a woman who's been recognized as the only Indian on the Forbes list of the world's self-made women billionaires. A first-generation entrepreneur, she's made India proud by building a globally recognized biopharmaceutical enterprise that's committed to innovation and affordability in delivering world-class therapeutics to patients globally. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, the chairperson and managing director of Biocon Limited, Name the EY Entrepreneur of the Year for 2019. Born to a brewmaster in the summer of 1953, Kiran Mazumdar Shah always wanted to follow in her father's footsteps. Um, I actually decided to pursue uh, my uh, master's in uh, brewing science and therefore I actually planned to be a brewmaster on completing this program, which I did in Australia. I then, of course, went on to complete a master brewer's, uh, you know, program in Australia, came back to India thinking I'll pursue a brewing uh, career, but that was not to be. I soon realized that, uh, you know, brewing was quite a male bastion. Uh, there was a lot of gender sensitivity and gender bias and I just couldn't get a job. And it was in sort of retaliation to not being able to get a job in brewing that I decided to pursue an entrepreneurial opportunity, which I don't think I ever imagined I would do as a young student growing up. Having faced the bias of a male-dominated industry, Kiran was determined to do something of her own. And it was a chance meeting with an Irish biotechnologist that gave wings to her dreams. I met with a biotech entrepreneur from Ireland who was keen on setting up something in India as a joint venture. And having known about me from my Australian days, he kind of tracked me down, offered me this opportunity of, uh, you know, setting up this joint venture and I thought to myself, I've got nothing to lose. Although I was um, quite aware of the fact that I had no business experience, I had no money to my name to invest in a, in, in, in a venture. And to that extent, I thought it was a foolish idea. But uh, it was my Irish uh, partner who basically convinced me that entrepreneurship is about taking, uh, you know, chances about uh, foolish courage but at the end of it it's about really wanting to pursue something uh, challenging and exciting and he felt I could do it. Although success didn't come easy it was her undying spirit and steely determination that defined the trajectory of her entrepreneurial journey. Those were difficult times when India was extremely resource constrained. So I literally had to basically bootstrap my way into building Biocon over the years. Um, and I was, uh, you know, challenged with a number of uh, credibility challenges, I would say. One was I was a, a, a young woman, I was 25 years old, no, uh, you know, sort of money in the bank, so to speak. 
um i was trying to build a business on a technology that nobody understood and uh, i had no experience uh, to talk of uh, so i was a high risk in every sense of the word after i overcame those challenges uh, you know difficult but surely i did overcome those challenges i was able to then build a company with a lot more self confidence and with uh, a sense that yes if i could get over those initial humps then the rest should be much easier despite some setbacks kiran mazumdar shah decided to follow her own business in 1978 leveraging the power of innovation and started developing industrial enzymes so what i started doing was to start looking at chemical processes that could easily be replaced with enzyme technologies and of course it was an idea ahead of its time because those were not the days of climate change and environmental sustainability uh it was all about uh, you know polluting cheap chemical technologies and people were very reluctant to really switch over to in their minds more expensive enzyme technologies nevertheless i think um, i was able to basically uh, sell these technologies to a large number of industries who uh, perceived them not as uh, you know replacing chemical technologies but rather as uh, technologies that could improve productivity and give superior product and all these uh, industries i think found it extremely useful to use enzyme technologies and we as a company became very good at developing innovative new technologies for many of these applications over the next few years as biocon was continuing its trail blazing work kiran decided to reinvent the business to develop biopharmaceuticals it was you know 20 years into my enzyme journey i then decided that it was time to reinvent the company i had to look at ways of applying the the technologies and the knowledge that i had built over 20 years saying what else can i do because i realized that enzymes were great as a business to start with but if i really wanted to build a large global sizable business enzymes were not the answer and that was the turning point again in my entrepreneurial journey where i decided to leverage all the technologies that i had built for uh, you know enzymes uh, to biopharmaceuticals um fermentation science again being put to a different use so the first uh, you know application of my brewing fermentation science was to enzymes and the next phase was to biopharmaceuticals Kiran was focused on building a new model of innovation that provided both affordability and accessibility to life-saving drugs. Uh insulin was uh an important uh, you know starting point for us in biopharmaceuticals because India was at the epicenter of diabetes we were the diabetic capital of the world and yet we were importing all our insulins. recombinant human insulin was really the preferred modern option for insulin therapy whereas most indian diabetics couldn't afford recombinant human insulin and i felt hey as a biotech company it's easy for us to produce recombinant human insulin and that was my starting point so very quickly we developed recombinant human insulin using a proprietary technology that we had developed for certain enzymes and it's interesting that even today we are the only company in the world that produces insulin and insulin analogs using a pikia platform pikia is a particular yeast and that is a, a very high producing yeast when it comes to insulin like products and that's the technology we pursue even today today Biocon is making a significant global impact by leveraging innovation to develop cutting edge healthcare solutions. So Biocon actually is today positioned at a stage where it has huge growth opportunities and it has 
uh, strategically carved out for itself uh, some very important uh, growth trajectories because we are really here to address the global healthcare challenge, uh, which, as you know, is uh, something that needs to be addressed. Uh, global healthcare spends are spiraling out of control. Biosimilars and generics are definitely going to provide one very important answer to those challenges. Biocon believes that it can make huge global impact in terms of healthcare. Um, as an entrepreneur, I've always believed that it's not about, uh, you know, developing blockbuster drugs that are a billion dollars a piece, but it's really about making a difference to billions of lives that depend on these kind of drugs. Here is one of Kiran's close associates sharing his views about the entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, I view her a little differently. Uh, because entrepreneurship is about taking risk. It's about, uh, you know, believing in an idea, maybe scaling that idea. Many entrepreneurs I've seen uh, look for exits, monetizing their uh, early investments. I don't look at Kiran that way. I look at Kiran first and foremost, believing in the science and technology rather than maybe chasing the business opportunities. So the, the business opportunities come as a result of her strong, uh, you know, interest and belief or curiosity in what science and technology can do for society or can do for healthcare now. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, the chairperson and managing director of Biocon, named the EY Entrepreneur of the Year for 2019, and she will represent India at the EY World Entrepreneur of the Year Awards in Monte Carlo later this year. Entrepreneur of the Year 2019, Dr. Kiran Matandar Shaw, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was the story of a champion who has revolutionized biotechnology in India. Our next winner is a man who's perhaps known for being an outstanding Indian leader in the world of business. A visionary and a role model in the truest sense, he's the man who transformed his small family business into a global conglomerate. We're talking about none other than Adi Godrej, chairman of the Godrej Group. Born into an illustrious family, Adi Godrej was influenced by his parents who adopted some unconventional parenting methods that helped him unleash his potentials in every aspect of life. Yes, I had a lot of business influence from my father. He used to talk about work and such things. He was, he had a doctorate from Germany and he was very knowledgeable. So he used to talk about a lot of other things which uh, evoked my interest. My mother was a teacher. Uh, she was also remarkable as an educationist. And she did a lot to especially promote my education. For example, uh, she gave me a fixed allowance, which was neither increased or decreased, from which I had to buy everything, including my school books, pay my school fees and any other expenditure uh, I might incur. And it taught me to manage money very well. Adi Godrej, a postgraduate in management from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, had his heart set in carrying on the family business right from the beginning. I went to St. Xavier's School and then to St. Xavier's College for two years. After which, at the age of 17, I joined the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston in the US. I registered to study mechanical engineering, but soon I realized that if I studied management, it would be very useful. In those days, there were no management schools outside the United States. None in Europe, none in Japan. Indian management schools had not yet started. This started soon after I came back. And, uh, and that was 
very useful to me. So at the age of 21, I returned to India. I had a master's in management. Being a third generation entrepreneur, Adi Godrej dived headfirst into the business, assuming full responsibility of the successes and failures ahead. Well, I came back, I joined the business the next day. Uh, uh, I was inducted into the business. I was uh, explained how things ran, etc. And then I had to pick things up. And the business was quite small in those days, so I quickly assumed full charge. I joined the soaps business first. Recognizing the opportunities and identifying the promising changes that were unfolding around him, Adi Gotrej always ensured that the business group stayed ahead of the race. Everything was very small in India at that time. Businesses were small. There was a lot of value-adding possibilities which I quickly went into and quickly started recruiting people with uh, good experience. Soon the management school started in India, the IIMs. And I started recruiting from the IIMs. And uh, cars were in acute shortage in those days. You had to wait a long time to get a car. So we registered ourselves to buy several cars, which we were able to give to people when they joined. So it was a very useful perquisite and that uh, we were able to attract some of the best candidates from the management schools and uh, the company started growing quite considerably. And it was the decade of liberalization that rapidly changed the course of business for Adi Godrej when the Godrej group pulled a string of acquisitions of major players in the market. I was in favor of that liberalization and I think uh, uh, we leveraged it very strongly. We went into joint ventures with some good companies. General growth was very good. And uh, one of the big positives was when we acquired the Goodnight brand in the 90s. We were leaders in household insecticide, not only in India, but in several other countries. And uh, that acquisition was very good. Later on, we acquired a lot of businesses outside India and grew strongly. Now, roughly for the group as a whole, 30% of our turnover comes from manufacturing outside India. So all these factors added to our rapid growth. From consumer goods to real estate to agribusiness, under his leadership and guidance, the small family business has transformed into an extraordinary entrepreneurial institution. We have uh, about 750 million consumers in India and about 1.15 billion consumers across the world. So we are one of the largest brands, if not the largest brand, headquartered in the developing world. Uh, we are in a lot of brand conscious categories. So uh, it has stood us in good stead, our brand philosophy and our brand growth. In the agro field also we've diversified into a, a lot of products like uh, making chicken, uh, like uh, uh, going into oil palm plantations. We've gone into oleochemicals, chemicals made from vegetable oils, which we were using to make soap. Then we have been, we've expanded into other areas and selling to other people. We into the, because we have a lot of real estate in Vikroli. Uh, so we felt getting into real estate would be good. There were earlier a lot of restrictions. There was the Urban Land Sealing Act, many other restrictions. Slowly the restrictions have reduced. So we have grown quite a lot. Our real estate company is also a listed company doing very well, Cold Godrej Properties. Since then, 
there has been no looking back for this 120-year-old family conglomerate that's continuing to make headwinds in the world of business. Well, the group uh, is continues to grow well. Uh, <clears throat> we are mainly in consumer products. As I've explained, we have a very large number of consumers. Uh, <clears throat> But we are in, <clears throat> now in a lot of industrial products. As we, we make equipment for the Indian space program. We make equipment for the Indian nuclear program. Uh, uh, we make machine tools. So we have industrial products, but still consumer products, even in our engineering division, which is Godrej and Boys, is still a major business. An ardent believer in giving back to society. Adi Godrej has always led by example. The group has been at the forefront of philanthropic and social activities with its inclusive and sustainable business practices. We always believe in not just working for shareholder interests, but working for stakeholder interests. So by stakeholders, we mean we include our consumers, we include our employees, we include our suppliers, and we're always looking at that. Now, of course, corporate social responsibility is a mandatory thing, but even when it was not, we had large budgets for corporate social responsibility. So for example, we train a lot of people we have a large program to train housewives to run salons from their home. So it helps them to make a considerable income and it also helps us to promote our products. So we do a lot of things in corporate social responsibility. Embracing transformation at every step, Adi Godrej is not only working towards shaping the destiny of the new global conglomerate, but is also immensely optimistic about India's growth prospects. I think India's growth is very close to my heart. I strongly believe that by 2050, purchasing power parity, India will be the largest economy in the world. We are today the third largest economy by purchasing power parity. China is number one, US is number two. And I think we will overtake first the US and then China because we will also be the largest population country in about 10 years time. Uh, India has a lot of potential and if well handled, we can grow very rapidly. Let's hear what Adi Godrej's daughter has to say about her father. The way I like to describe him is he's a businessman and a gentleman, correct? So he was able to keep capitalism and being good, uh, keep those very strongly, uh, very strongly together. And, you know, Godrej started in India's Swadeshi movement. We started with this bigger purpose and I think he's kept that very, very strong for over 50 years and I think that will will continue. Well, that was Adi Godrej, chairman of the Godrej Group, awarded the EVI Lifetime Achievement Award 2019 for his invaluable contribution in shaping India's economic future. Gentlemen, the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award, Mr. Adi Godrej. Now that's a wrap on our first webisode of this four-part special series that celebrates the stories of the winners of the 21st EVI Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. We'll be back with another webisode featuring another set of winners of the EVI Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. Until then, from the entire team, goodbye, many thanks for watching and stay inspired.